Franz, did you tell our dead file we're having coffee out here? Yes, sir. Our dead file is still on the telephone. Frau Schrader? Yes, thank you. No sign of the children, Franz. Not yet, sir. Georg, these mountains, they're magnificent. Yes. There's no other mountains quite like them. They're friendly. Oh, look. That green stretch of woods over there, when the wind moves through it, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village? Oh, that's not a village. That's a town. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him. And when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like these mountains. Except, you keep moving. How is it that you can be away from this place as much as you are? Maybe I've been searching for a reason to come back to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Max can't still be on the telephone. I know he's desperate to get singers for the Kaltzburg Festival, but... You like it here. Well, we have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation by now. It is, and I'm president. You? President of a corporation? Well, after all, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I can't see you sitting behind a desk. Well, of course. I wear a business suit, and I smoke a big cigar. <clears throat> Excuse me, Captain. Had that value like this coffee? Well, he's telephoning. He just finished. I'm sorry I took so long. Any luck? How would you like this for the Kultzberg Festival? The finest singing group in Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in all of Europe, and the best soprano in the world. Max, that's something I'd love to hear. <laughs> so would I. All I've ever got up to now is a basso who isn't even profundo. Oh, Max, you always come up with a good festival concert. And why? Because my motto is, never start out looking for the ones you wind up getting. And that's why I've been telephoning Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. On Georg's telephone? How else could I afford it? Why am I up here? Well, I hoped it was because you liked me. Oh, of course I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine cellar. Max! I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. Uh, Gail, do you have a cathedral around here? Uh, yes, Norberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. Good. In the next few days, I have to visit all these towns around here and listen to their choirs, quartets, orchestras. You'll be here for meals, Oh, won't yes. You? It was in a town about that size, Waltzman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival became very famous and taught all over the world. Yes. Well, whatever became of them? Well, by the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. <laughs> Who lives in that dilapidated castle over there? Rumpelstiltskin? Baron Elberfeld, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. Actually, I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, why don't you throw a dinner party for me while I'm here? Nothing very much, just something lavish. I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. This isn't time to make enemies, darling. Let's make some friends. 
I can't understand what's happening to the children. You're not worried about them, are you? They should have been here to welcome you. <laughs> well, it couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't even met me yet. Forgive me. I'll try to find them. Elsa, have you made up Georg's mind yet? <laughs> Is he going to marry you? Yes. Well, he hasn't admitted it yet. I don't know why, there seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is? No. Oh, I do. What? Oh, it's very simple. It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich, and you're rich. <laughs> oh, Max. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms, away upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. The famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, you very seldom hear of. Of nothing you haven't got. How can love survive? No rides for us on the top of a bus in the face of the freezing breezes. You reach your goals in your comfy old rolls or in one of your Mercedes. Far, very far off the fame are we, quaint and bizarre as a team. Dream are we, but we'll keep romance alive. Two millionaires with a dream are you. You'll we'll make your love, love survive. No little cold water flat have we. Warmed by the glow of insolvency. Up to your next insecurity, how can love survive? How can I show what I feel for you? I cannot go out and steal for you. I cannot die like Camille for you. with financial affairs are too busy for simple pleasure when you are poor it is too your l'amour for l'amour all the poor have pleasure caught in our gold-plated chains are we lost in our wealthy domains are we trapped by our capital gains are we but we'll keep romance Trapped by your capital gain. 